Hi guys, Martin here coming to you with painting number, I forgot, 33 I think, or 34. And this is called Smoky Mountain Sunrise. Uh, Ruth and I, probably about six, seven years ago, we stayed with our niece who lives in Asheville, North Carolina. She did live in North Car Asheville, North Carolina. Um, we went down there, stayed there for a couple of weeks. While we were there, we took a trip from Asheville up into the Smoky Mountains. Um, walked around the top, looking at the scenery from the top of the, the mountains. Took a lot of photographs. This is a trail on the Smoky Mountains. And uh, it's, it's a really beautiful place if you haven't, haven't been there. And then from there, we went down the other side into Tennessee into an area called Gatlinburg, and we spent a day in Gatlinburg. Had a lot of fun there. And uh, this is kind of a memory of that event. So yeah, if you've never been to the Smoky Mountains, they're really pretty. Um, so I wanted to do this painting, Sunrise, Smoky Mountain Sunrise. Hope you like it. And if you want to see how I put this together uh, uh, from start to end, stick around because I'm about to show you a time-lapse video um, of this being put together. I hope you like it. I hope you stick around. But let me pick the painting up, take it close to the camera, I hope you can see it. Yeah, there you go. Smoky Mountain Sunrise. Really enjoyed painting this. Again, this painting, got to let it dry for three, three months at least, uh, maybe more. And when it's set solid, I'll be putting two thin coats of varnish on it. I always allow a week between each coat. And then the last coat, I allow a couple of weeks. And then I'll fit it into the frame. It's just sitting in the frame at the moment. So you can see what it's going to look like when it's complete. Um, so that will be available to purchase on my website um, September the 1st onward. But in the meantime, when this is touched dry, I'll be taking some photographs and uh, send the photograph that I think looks closest to the actual painting off to the printers, get some proof prints made for limited series reproduction G-Clay prints. And if I like them, then that the prints will be advertised on my website uh, June the 1st, available to buy. But if you, uh, if you want to pre-order now, leave a comment below or go to my Facebook page. Um, send me an instant message on Messenger. Or you can send me an email if you're interested in buying a print of this. Or even if you want to buy the actual painting. You can pre-order now and that will be held for you until it's ready to be shipped on September 1st. So I hope you like it. I really enjoyed painting this one and I like how it's turned out with a contrast of colour uh, of light and dark. Got the shadows, got the light coming around the trees here, hitting the ground there and the edges of the trees illuminating that. And I like the orange glow coming through those leaves there that I've been able to create. So yeah, I'm, I like this one. I've had a lot of, lot of positive feedback from people that have seen it in reality, neighbours and friends. And a lot of people saying that it's their second favourite painting that, of theirs that I've done. So I know they've already said, people have already been saying they want prints of it. Um, which makes me happy. Uh, it's worth all the effort, but I really enjoy it. It's what it's about for me. It's just a cathartic hobby for me that's turned into something that people want to purchase prints or originals of. All right, enough waffling. Stick around if you want to see how I created this. Uh, Time-lapse video about to start now. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate your support. Much appreciated. Bye.
Hi guys, I've decided to make a start on painting number 34 that I'm going to call Woodland Sunrise. I've done a rough sketch of what I want and what I'm going to do now is apply a, a thin wash of a mix of burnt umber and yellow ochre, thinned down heavily with odorless mineral spirits, just to make a wash and that will give like amber tones. Um, which give warm tones, it'll dry fast so tomorrow I can start applying the first layer of paint and some of those warm tones from the uh, this burnt sienna yellow oak mix I usually use raw sienna but I'm out I just went for it and I can't find it so I must have used it all um, so I'm just mixing the burnt sienna with the yellow oak so a thin wash of that, some of the tones will be dark where I've got shadow and then light where it's very light and uh, hardly anything where it's really bright. So this will be like a amber layout sketch of the different shadows, darks and highlights. And as I say it just gives a warm tone to the colours that are applied on top. So I'm just going to make a start doing this. Just going to brush it on fast. It's not about um, accuracy with it, it's just getting the warm tones down. it for now I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then tomorrow I can start getting some colour down and uh, we'll take it from there so I'll see you tomorrow guys morning guys I'm back to this painting the um, woodland sunrise painting number 34 I put the underpainting on using a wash of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Um, I've allowed 48 hours for it to dry this morning. It was nice and dry yesterday. It was still a little tacky in the morning. So I gave it another 24 hours. So what I'm going to do now is start putting down the first layer of colour. This is what I call the blocking in stage. It's just blocking colour down. Putting down the dominant tones in all the different areas of the canvas of the composition. 
I just want to get paint down, the first layer of paint. And oil paint takes a long time to dry by itself straight from the tube. So what we do on the earlier layers is we mix it with a medium. And I like to use the liquid mediums by Winsor & Newton. I use a Winsor & Newton liquid original. But in this case I'm using liquid impasto by Winsor & Newton. And what I've done is I put down about a thumb size uh, tip of my thumb, that size amount of paint of the colours I'm using and then I put about a pea size of impasto, about 25% of the amount of the paint that was put down mixed it in with a palette knife and after mixing each colour you wipe it clean before you go on to the next colour so you don't transfer colour to colour in the mix um, and this impasto makes the paint a lot more creamier, helps it go further a long way. It goes down really nice and smooth. And um, it also has a fast drying property on it. So helps the paint to dry longer. If you, if you put paint oil paint down thick straight from the tube, it can take months, even a year or two before that paint will set solid before you can varnish it. So if you want your paintings to dry faster, especially if you're doing commission work, you're going to need to mix with mediums that help the paint dry faster. And don't put it down so thick as if you're doing a heavy textured impasto painting. So I'm going to start painting. I'm going to show the colours I've got down on the palette. They're the colours I add. That's the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna that I used and mixed there to do different tones. This is a cadmium yellow. I've got a sap green. I've got a phalo deep green. I've got a phalo blue. I've got a lizarin crimson. Um, I've got an ivory black and a titanium white. And they've all been pre-mixed with impasto so they're ready just to stick my brush in and start putting paint down. And that's what I'm going to do. Oh, and to the side of me, I have a little bowl of um, odorless mineral spirits. Every now and then I might mix a little bit of that in to thin the paint further. And uh, I have a separate bowl for cleaning brushes as well uh, between each uh, colour. I'm just going to use... Um, I'm just going to use a, a number six flat brush just to start spreading paint down and then I'll switch when I'm doing smaller areas I'll switch to maybe a round brush or I'll switch to my Dega Striper brush I like the Dega Striper it's, it's useful in a lot of different applications the Dega Striper is a um, angled brush you can do broad strokes or you can use the edges of it, do lines or points. So it's a multi-purpose brush, pretty useful. All right, enough waffling. Let's start getting some paint down. Excuse my head in front of the camera. Just wiping up some spillage. All right. So I'm going to start with the sky, and I'm going to work my way down, top to bottom. Because if you work from the bottom, you go up to the top, there's a danger that you're going to catch what you've done at the bottom. So it's always, I feel, best practice to work from top to bottom. And uh, Top of the sky, this is morning, it's like a greyish lavender sky at the top. And as it gets closer to the sunlight, we get more yellows and oranges and then... Uh, bright white in the centre of where the sun light is coming from. So I'm just going to mix a greyish colour just to start me off at the top, a greyish lavender.
so we've got sky blocked in, sun blocked in, we've got the distant mountain range, we've got this uh, hill in the mid ground that's close to us. Now we're going to work on blocking in trees. Alright, so I've mixed a mid tone green that I like the look of, so I'm now going to put that down on the canvas and start blocking in leaves. So guys, I'm still blocking in, the uh, camera switched off, so I just had to reset the camera and start, so you've missed some of it, sorry guys. But as you can see, I'm still blocking in, I've been working on the ground, and, uh, and I'm going to finish off this side of the trees, and then that side. But you can see it taking shape now. This is just the first layer. The second layer starts to bring it to life. So I'm going to continue. And you can stick around and watch if you want. Um, just got to mix more greens, shades of green up. Okay, I think that's about as far as I want to go with it. You can still see orange coming through, but that's where I'm going to do little small fine detail leaves. I don't want to block it all in because then you've got to then paint the sky around that to create the small leaves. So um, also with the sun hitting it, these front edges of these trees are going to have a glow to them because the sun's penetrating through it and there'll be a few sun rays coming down sun rays penetrating into the tree then a ray coming down onto this light area but for now I think we're good with stage one I'm happy with the way it's looking and I can already see how it's going to look when I start blocking in detail I can visually see that it's going to start to come to life pretty quickly so if you like what you see, I'm going to take some photographs now of this stage, post them to Facebook, and uh, I'll see you at stage two guys, thanks for watching, bye, have a great weekend, cheers.